split a wishbone. This is one of the oldest traditional hot rod things you needed to do. We've been doing this since we've been putting V8s in Model A's. We've got an early forward wishbone here. Basically turning it into radius rods means we're going to cut it here and here. And the reason we're going to do that is so that we can spread them out, get our engine to clear. Otherwise, this area right here is going to hit our oil pan or our starter, depending on what type of motor you're putting in. So I'm going to need a couple tools before we can proceed. Give me a minute. First thing we do before we spend a lot of money and buy something that's bent or twisted, we're going to check it for that. Just an average carpenter's level here. We're going to set it down the radius side and this is just a little old machinist eighth inch rule. And we're going to try to stick it through the gap and it won't, as long as it doesn't go through anywhere, like it doesn't on this side, that's good. So we know we don't have any more than an eighth inch or less of gap. This side we can actually see that there's no gap at all. It flows up there real nice. We're going to turn it to the bottom sides. We're going to set our steel rule against there. And we're going to do the same thing. Now there's welds down the bottom side that you're going to see, so it's not going to be quite as clean and as easy to get a, a good look. Well, that one's perfect. So, we know that we're straight. We've looked at our perches. We've made sure the holes aren't all wallowed out. And we definitely need to know whether or not this wishbone is going to fit our front axle. So you can just take a quick measurement. This is two and a quarter, standard Model A stuff. But you know, just to be sure, let's just slide it in there. That's a way out. I've only got one tip for cutting it. Two, actually. Safety first. Wear a pair of safety glasses. And when you go to clamp your wishbone in your vise, don't clamp it where you're going to be chroming it or, you know. If you're going to put a good finish on these, then don't get it in the jaw of the vise. Pretty simple. There's a couple other things you're going to need to complete this project. You should probably source those before you get started. But don't forget, you're going to need some 11 16 threaded steel bungs a pair of tie rod ends. I personally prefer the early Ford type, but there were a lot of early hot rods built with high ends. And you're also going to need a pair of frame brackets to attach your new radius rods to your frame rails or to your cross member. All right, one other thing. I hope it's not too late since we already have my one side cut off. But for you, make sure you cut right underneath the weld line. All right, we don't want to be cutting down in here or something. Let's stay right up in this area. take a tape measure and see how good of a job we did here. Now we stayed very close to the weldments like we said. So I'm going to go from the perch weld to the end of the axle and take a measurement and that is 30 and about 9 sixteenths. And I'm going to measure the bottom one just in case we're going to have to do some extra cutting if we messed up or something. And we have 30 and 9 sixteenths. And if you look at the ends, it wasn't a bad cut. Both very close, well, within a sixteenth of an inch, using basic hand tools. We've got a vise, a hacksaw, a pair of safety glasses, and just a tape measure. I think that's one of the reasons hot rods are getting so popular nowadays. In your garage, using hand tools, you can make a really cool looking car. Our next step is to clean up this little leftover bit of tubing from our original, whatever you call that piece, casting. So we've got a bung that fits very nicely over here. We have a bung that will not go in right here. So what we're going to do is, let me grab a little chisel, hammer. And we're just going to drive this remaining piece out. If 
Let me get a little. Well, I could probably get it with this. Well, when we went to put the bung in the end of the radius rod, we found out that the bung measures a hundred thousand smaller than the inside of the radius rod. Now that's not going to work. We would just have too much slop, and you can't get good weldment with that type of clearance. So we came up with a cure, and we're going to show you how we did that. We picked up a piece of scrap chromoly tubing. We're going to make a small slit in it, and we're going to press it, hand press it, over this tube, the 50 thousandths on each side. We make up the gap. Give me a couple minutes, let me get a pipe cutter, I'll show you exactly what we did. So we basically cut a small section of chromoly tubing to use as a sleeve. I'm going to now slit it back with our hacksaw. So I'm making a perpendicular cut, pretty much just down the length of it, to one side. I'm going to grab a couple different files here, and I'm going to clean out the ragged edges inside. Yeah, I can see it fine. Alright, so I've taken all the sharp edges out of the inside of the tubing. I'm now going to mount a ball peen hammer in the vise, peening end up, and we're going to expand this using just an ordinary hammer. That's what we've done. We've made a small sleeve to fit over the bushing to make up our hundred thousandths. Our next step is to drill two plug weld holes. They're going to be quarter inch right in the end of our radius rod so that the bung doesn't pull out. We're just going to pass straight through from one side to the other. I'm just going to use a regular file and we're going to clean up the area where we're going to be welding. So we're not welding through rust. Now I'm going to use a file and put a nice radius all the way around the edge right here so that we'll get a good weld fitment. We'll have a nice little trough to get it in there. done is we've put a nice chamfer all the way around so when our bung goes into the tube we'll have a nice little trough to fill with weld with welding rod that way the weld isn't sitting up on top of two pieces of metal you'd have to grind it off if you're going to chrome it or something that would make a weak weld this is the right way to do it what we're going to do is line up the opening here with the weld on the bottom of the radius rod we're going to slip it into the tube like that, use a rubber hammer on the threads, just tap it in, and before
before we get it all the way in, we're going to go back to our tape measure, and I'm going to measure from the perch weld, like we did before, all the way out to the end of the bung. Remember, we're shooting for 30 and 9 sixteenths, so I've got a little further to go, and we're just going to creep in on that with our, our rubber mallet, and uh, when we get the two the same length, then we're going to weld them up. Alright, we're going to take our tie rod end, thread it into the bung, just to make sure we didn't have any of the threads in the bung deform from welding. Looks like, looks like we did a good job. So we decided to go with the SP frame mount bracket. Once you put this on, it's going to kind of look like that down the side of your car. You can have all the room you ever wanted for oil pan clearance or anything you want to put between the frame rails. There you have it. Finished radius rod, and that concludes our wishbone radius rod conversion project.